Hi, my name's Dan Keen from Spitfire Audio. Today I'm going to be showing you a demo that I composed for our library Fractured Strings, a library that was created in collaboration with Bleeding Fingers Music. This library seeks to fill that niche of phrases and articulations that are really difficult to program, so you have to capture it at the source. And there are so many unique rotations and displacements and splinters, etc. So many articulations that are really musical and beautiful to play, but would be impossible to create if you were simply programming a legato patch. Now we have a bit of a rule internally within our composer team, which is whoever can put their towel down on the sun lounger first gets it. And so for me, I started this demo well ahead of everyone else, which meant that I could write a contextual demo, which was really exciting for me because it means I can get loads of my toys out that I haven't played with for a while and, um, and do something really creative that incorporates the library, but places it within a slightly more hybrid setup. And since our Abbey Road Orchestra module, Low Percussion, just came out, I thought I'd also add that to the mix as well, which has added a much needed bit of momentum uh, and punch, I think. So I'm going to play you this piece first, and then we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you some of the articulations that I've used, and how you might be able to use it within your music. So a really eclectic mix there of libraries. We've got our low percussion from our new Abbey Road Orchestra. We've got fractured strings down here in the middle. And then we also have Eric Whitaker Choir, uh, Abbey Road Orchestral Foundations with the horns. And then we've got some pads here from Albion Neo, Solstice, the callers, Olaf Arnold's piano, a sine wave, which is just the stock logic sound, and then uh, the tape synth pad aged. So really eclectic. And I think a lot of people, when they see a demo like this, they think, well, where would you get started? How would you create something from scratch? But I actually started my piece off with the Neo pad here. I just found a sound that I really liked and thought, I'm just gonna stretch this out across the whole piece here. So I've got a canvas to play with. I think it's really important when working with more phrase-based libraries to have something tonal and textural sort of throughout that you can kind of pin things on and hang things on. Um, because as you can hear, a lot of what I've used the fractured strings for are more gestures than anything else. That's what this library is really great for, sort of bringing something out of the surface. So you can see that I've got my Neo pad there. I've also got Eric Whitaker Choir just doing some ums. Sounds really nice, actually. Um, and then I've also got the Solstice Callers Spoken articulation. Mm -hmm. 
the sort of treading water a little bit, adding a little bit of movement, a bit of interest there. So if I add all three of these together, we get this. piano helps add that sort of slightly more emotional edge, I suppose. You can see here that I've turned up this extra signal here, which is the, I believe it's the spring reverb that's been stretched and mangled a little bit. Really love that sound. And then, of course, the star of the show is this, Fractured Strings. I started off with the declamatory shorts, which by themselves sound like this. And I've got a series of reverbs on here, but if I turn all of these off, this is how they sound. Now you may notice in the track name here, it says minus three. That's because I've actually tuned this down by three semitones, just to stretch it out a little bit further, um, because these are short and I wanted it to feel a little bit more, um, more of a slow ebb and flow, I guess, with this. Um, now, of course you can turn it down really far if you want to, and that creates something totally different. which is really, really beautiful. And if I add my various reverbs back in. So I've started the piece with these fairly simple chords. I love the high frequencies. Um, I think it's the way the bow goes next to the bridge. It just creates these lovely overtones. So when I combine that then with these pads that we've got at the bottom, it really adds a fuller picture. Now these statements are really great as well because you can choose how you want it to work. And I've tuned these down by three semitones as well. It just helps to soften it slightly, um, but really, really beautiful. And I did set the tempo roughly to be the same as these statements, so it does ebb and flow with the tempo of this piece. I find this library is just so great for those transitions or moving things into a slightly different mood. So we start off with more of the shorts at the beginning, then a few statements, which I think ground things nicely. And then we have these amazing splinters, which I showed you at the very start. These are upper fourth, um, but they've also been tuned down by minus three. So you feel that slightly slower pull. So all of this build-up leads us into the main section of the piece. You can see we're adding a few more elements here. We've got the bass, the piano, uh, this 
low percussion here was from Abbey Road scoring selections. This was before we had access to our new Abbey Road orchestra, so that's still there. But have a listen to the way this feels. If I just mute the strings for now, you can hear the difference that this adds. So then if I bring the strings back in, that sounds like this. So there's a mixture here of major second and minor second rotations. These are great. These are fairly free feeling. So the players are performing these in slightly different ways. You've got some people who are just doing the harmonics and then some people who are doing this slow rotation. So you always have that slightly icy glistening sound over the top. And the cellos are also doing the same thing. And then we've also got our splinters as well. Really, really lovely. So combined together, they just help to add a little bit of movement. Now the harmony is a little bit ambiguous here, if I just start with the bass and figure out what this is. Really, really creative. Most of that is actually coming from the tape synths, so we've got all these different layers. So what I've done here, I think, you know, I've boosted this top end here, added a little bit of tremolo, and then just cut out some frequencies here. Uh, and then we've got our basic sine wave here. Adding a little bit of saturation here just to bring out those upper harmonics as well. So combined, we've got this. Love that, it's kind of glitching a little bit. Um, then we've got our piano, and let's add the callers as well. And our horns add quite a lot as well, actually. Choir here.
So it's a little bit discordant, um, but together I think it works really well. And then of course we've got our low percussion here at the top, which I haven't forgotten about. that great sound of Abbey Road. Um, I love these brushes in particular, they're really cool. You can hear the timbre shifts there. Uh, when you play it really lightly, you get a sort of slightly more high frequency, there's less of the tone, there's less of the resonance. You don't even know it's really toms at that point. then the harder you hit it, you obviously get that tone come through. Also got the rims here, the sticks on rims. Really, really lovely. Uh, and then of course our bass drums as well. So this piece then builds through to what is ultimately our most tonal, most sort of emotional uh, section. It makes any chord sound beautiful, um, but combined with the other strings, it sounds like this. Because these rotations sort of ebb and flow in their own time, it's quite nice to spread them out slightly. So we've got our splinters here. And then that sort of mixes with these rotations in a way that's really pleasing. I think what makes this library sound so realistic is how small the ensemble size is. Um, and because each player was instructed to play slightly differently, it, you really can hear each player in the room. Uh, now, I just wanted to show you some of the processing that I did, um, because I know that sometimes seeing huge amounts of processing can be a little bit daunting. To be honest, I haven't done that much. Um, the main thing I just wanted to show you were these reverbs that I've got here. I've got a couple of reverbs. Um, this one here is the Cinematic Rooms by Liquid Sonics. Two and a half seconds. I know this is a favorite of Paul's. Um, and then this is my favorite, which is The Seventh Heaven, also by Liquid Sonics. Um, again, about two and a half seconds. And then I've got here an EMT plate. This is 3.5 seconds. Uh, and then Spaced Out, which is an amazing plugin from Baby Audio. I really, really like this company. Um, and finally, Little Plate. As you can see, they're nearly eight seconds. So the combination of all of those things together just gives you something that feels like an ethereal pad in a way that just a single reverb doesn't do. Now, you don't have to have five completely different reverbs, um, even just the same reverb, but altered slightly by adding an EQ to some sections or you know, maybe a width plugin or tremolo, things like that. You can get really creative in, um, in making something that sort of undulates and moves a little bit more. And then this is sort of going out of my my kind of default string bus. What I try to do is avoid the muddy low frequencies of around sort of 200 to 300 hertz. I always pull out a little bit there. And I also pull out at about three kilohertz as well, because that's often where some of the more uh, shrill frequencies tend to resonate, particularly in libraries like this, where the players are performing near the bridge, you get lots of these overtones come out. And if you're layering lots of libraries together, it can help just to kind of subdue that a little bit. And I think because I haven't used loads of articulations in this piece, you can kind of choose where in the frequency spectrum you want your sounds to live. So that's part of the reason for adding things like saturation to your basses, so that it 
adds a little bit of that higher energy in the mid frequencies, which is often lacking in mixes. People often think about low frequencies and high frequencies, but don't necessarily think about the picture there in the middle. I had a lot of fun writing this piece. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. You can check out Fractured Strings at the link down below. Uh, I'm going to play this for you one more time, but thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.